looking at my PS2 very recently, and um, PS2 Slim. My PS2, well, PS2 and my PS2 Slim, and uh, oh yeah, I've already had both. I and can see that one. yeah, and I uh, and I realized that the Xbox One S is pretty much like what you get to see. <laughs> like no, like the funny thing is, you can like Xbox One S is literally like the circle. Like they, what they did was, of course, if you look at the last generation PS2. Um, you have this console that is designed in a way in which three of them all broke down. Yeah, like, but what we have is like this console that is like so much. Like, there's so much design that's like taken from the PlayStation 2. It's incredible. Like, it's just, <laughs> We're just taking like, PS2 and just put our Xbox modes in it. It's ridiculous. Call it <laughs> yeah. The end. But, but Sign like, our logo. what you find is very critical little things. Like, the PS2 has lines. And like, like the PS2 original had lines. The Xbox One S has circles. That's it. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Tech Gaming Podcast, <laughs> episode number sixteen. I'm Brian Swan. Oh, we're on a sixteen episode. Joining you, as the democracy you find on YouTube. I'm K Nine Biscuits. Like, joining happy. you as a guy who's doing podcasts right now with no life. Anyway, <laughs> like. And then the PS2, the PS2 Slim had the same separation point. That like when you like you can, like what you show me is like a picture of it standing up, and like it just like looks so much. Yeah. Uh, like, like people like look up a picture of like the uh, X PS2 Slim and, and like the, and the Xbox and, One and Slim. S, S. like both of them standing up ver- vertically. Well, get hard they, they look way too similar, right? It's 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 a ador- it's adorably stupid, but. Um, also, but the thing again. But then again, right? I mean, PS4 literally designed to look just like a PS2 Slim. I think too. Like the PS, the PS4 has the same exact line cut in half here, uh, except it has like sort of a hexagonal uh, parallelogram sort of style where it's sliced in the front. Um, but yeah, uh, want to talk about PS2 for a second? Um, I actually had three of them. I have two of them with me right now. I don't want to lose these two devices. I mean, these things are amazing, uh, and I want to talk about why I like. I have a very personal connection to the PS2. They both still work. They both still work. One of them, one of the disc drives is kind of, is not kind of like working as well, but they both work. Um, you know, I have a really personal connection to the PS2. It was the longest, like this was the console that was in my house for the longest. We didn't get a PS3 until 2010 when Grand Channel 5 came out. So from 2000, like from literally 2000 all the way up to 2010, like I remember as a kid, my mom going into the store, grabbing a PS2, like don't tell your dad. Like I remember like, that that surprise and that like like looking at the console like holy shit because like we had a PS well, PS2 was like the console to have in that generation and that, it, for that gen- everyone had a PS2 yeah like that thing blew like I don't like I don't even like when I was even when it was 2005 I didn't know what an Xbox 360 was because we didn't buy one we just like kept going with the PS2 well into the like the eighth gen- into the seventh generation we didn't really pay attention to yeah, that. Yeah, because, like, back then, back in that time, like, even when I went to a friend's house, they had an Xbox, or they had a GameCube, they always had a PS2 on a side. <laughs> like, it was like, there. nope, everyone had a PS2. Right, right. Um, and one of the greatest things about it was the fact that you could, like, this thing from, like, from launch was probably one of the greatest consoles of all time. Like, hands down, one of the easiest to use. Yeah. Like, just, well, there's of like course, no, There's, of, like, no launch that's, like, better than the PS2 launch. Yeah, I mean, of course, you could talk, even right now, where it's, like, you have to upgrade. You have to go and put put more software into your. You have to so- have a software patch for your newer consoles. PS4 and Xbox One. You have to download a software patch just to open up your console. There's like you can't play out of the box anymore. That's that's non-existent, right? So like PS2, you not only could play out of bo- out of the box, but you could play PS1 games. You could use your PS1 controller. Uh, you could use your you could I'm not like you can use your, mem- your PS1 memory card, but you could use your PS1 controller. You could play PS1 games. This thing was a PS1. It was also a DVD player. It was also a CD player. This thing was your like we talk about Xbox One doing too much. This thing was your was your hub. If you didn't want to get a, a, a DVD player, if you didn't want to get a CD player, you could just hook this up to your TV, play music. You could hook this up to your uh, TV, watch a movie. It's like there well, was a reason to beat the Dreamcast. It was it was a huge package. It was so much in one. It was a PS. It was a PS. It, like it, it, other be, it being a new system, it was a PS One. <laughs> it was a DVD player and a CD See, player. Yeah, it's it just how do you top that? Especially in a time where it's like Xbox had the D, had the online functionality, and that's where you kind of win, right? Uh, but that's where they kind of won in their own category, but. 
PS2 kind of made that, like, uh, uh, attachable later on. Later on, yeah. Um, but, yeah. But not many games made use of it on. Well, as far as I remember. I'm not sure, to be honest. Right, right. But they were just... I think PS2, you know, you... Even, like, uh, this... It's... I, I remember as a kid, like, I, I was an idiot as a kid. I would... I, I couldn't, like, uh, if I was a PS2, I would not want to be the... I would not want to have lived in my house because um, I did some really bad things to my PS2, man. Like, I remember there were times where, like, my, the disc reader wouldn't read my, my driver 3 disc, and I would bang on the PS2. I, I do would, that, like, well, like, I would, like all my consoles. Like, when I was... See, like, I abu- I'm a console abuser. I would, like, when I was 8 or 9 or 10, like, no, not even 10. I'm sorry, when I was, like, 6, 7, 8, 9, 7, 8, 9, 10... Um, I like my driver in my Grand Turismo Four wasn't working. I'd bang on the console just to get it to work. I I was destroying these consoles. They when it was a brick still. PS Two was a brick, but I was destroying this console. Dude, if my dude, if my consoles were sentient, I'd be in jail right now. <laughs> child abuse. <laughs> human human on console uh, <laughs> violence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, oh okay. Um, uh, for PS Two, I just found their launch. Uh, the uh for like um. Oh, shit. Wait a second. What's up? Damn it. Wait, give me a second. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Searching up yeah. information. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Uh, for the Japanese launch, it was A Train 6, Drum Mania, Eternal Ring, um, some Japanese name, more Japanese shit, Ridge Racer 5, Stepping Stepping Selection, Street Fighter EX3. For, so, yeah, there were some stand. Yeah. yeah uh, for US launch, there was Armored Core 2, uh, Dead or Alive 2, uh, Dynasty Warriors 2. Um, ESPN, Winter Games and Attraction at Track and Field, Eternal Ring, Evergrace, Fantavision, Gun for Gun Griffin Blaze, Madden NFL 2001, Midnight Club Street Racing, NFL 2001. Um, oh jeez, wait, Midnight Club is a launch game? Oh man, Midnight Club Street that's, Racing, yes, that's beautiful. Midnight yeah, Club is such fun, was such a fun game. I remember I had the uh, I had Midnight Club the original, and it's, it's really fun. I think we played it once in, like a while ago. Um, it has a nice open world. It's a lot of fun. Um, is there more than that you have to read? Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, yeah. Ready to Rumble Boxing Round 2, Ridge Racer 5, uh, Silent Scope, <laughs> Smuggler's Run, SSX, SSX, that's, yeah, uh, that's yeah, right. Street Fighter, EX, um, Samora, Swingway Golf, Tekken Tag Tournament, oh, man. Time Splinters, Unreal Tournament, Wild, uh, Wild Wild mind, Racing man. X Squad. Games. That is a good launch lineup. That is a beautiful there. launch lineup. But that is a sexy ass launch lineup. <laughs> I mean, no. like, I'm looking at the GameCube launch lineup for, like, the wait, U.S. And, like, uh, I mean, all they got is, all they got that looks good is, like, a, like a, they have Crazy Taxi. Crazy Taxi was fun. We I remember, mentioned. Yeah, I remember my friend had... had Super uh, Monkey Ball, Star Wars Rogue Squadron, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3. Well, Rogue Squadron was okay. Rogue Squadron, yeah. all right, whatever. I mean, but. they, I mean, but PS2 had, like, they had a shit ton of titles. I mean, I mean, it's just, like... I mean, probably it's, it's probably like what was good, uh, like perception, like a uh, uh, perspective may be, like perspective and opinion may vary, like what was good right now. But like they just had a shit ton at launch. That yeah, was so the they, thing. Had a, they had a shit ton at launch, and then there were there were there was a lot of software coming from the first few years later. Uh, I remember uh, we bought we had Gran Turismo three. Uh, yeah, we had Gran Turismo three, and man, that was such a like. I think the PlayStation two is the reason why why. I think of graphics as such an important port of uh, such an important piece of gaming because I remember going from Grand Turismo Two and playing Driver and playing all of these PS One level games where it's like the graphics were you know you had a, a substantial difference. You jump into PS Two and it's like oh man, like this was the first step to how realistic could you like the, like the, e- like like yeah you know like uh, oh go ahead no it's uh, just like it, it's yeah. it's. You look at like I remember like looking at Grand Turismo Three and I'm like all right it can look around the car and like the same like, the same thing with uh, Grand Turismo Five where you could like look around the car it's like every evolution uh, in every piece of like every game I remember playing Grand Driver Three and just playing all these games that blew my mind like GTA for example like all those games it's like graphically there was nothing really that like every like the evolving of software like we we grew up in such a time period where unlike other ages like from the the jump was so radical from yeah. PS1 to PS2 to PS3 from uh N64 to GameCube well in, yeah the GameCube particularly not to Wii but uh in general and then like to X from Xbox to three to 360 that jump was just so radical and so quick that you would just like 
you look back and it's like, <laughs> we were there like 10 years ago and the cars didn't even look like cars. And now you have cars that look like you could look outside and it looks just like that car. Like, my mind yeah. was blown from the jump, like, of how well these games looked. Like, um, like the, uh, I'm like the thing about, like, the thing about, like, the uh, PS2 is, like, even, like, um, it, like, it was, like, the first, it was, I mean, it was, like, the only console of that generation to actually have backwards compatibility, because the Xbox was starting out, and the GameCube didn't really have backwards compatibility with cartridges. Right. So, like, it, well, when you bought your, when you bought your, like, new uh, PS2, if the, there wasn't a game that, like, really looked attractive for you on the PS2 as a, at the moment. It was a PS1. Like, it was PS, we can still buy PS1 games. Right. That was a cool thing about it. Also, if, like, I don't think it was a no, noticeable, noticeable thing back then, but, like, the PS2 just ha also has just a better PS1 reader, disc reader. Really? I mean, like it's like a, like um like most games that don't really work well on my PS1, they just like read better on my like on the PS2. I remember. Oh man! Wow. That's like brilliant. they read through scratches and shit. Yeah, well, I know you can change the speed of your you can change the disc speed as well in there in in your settings. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, PS2. I mean, like that was the hallmark. That was the moment where it's like, oh. They didn't. This was the point where it's like, um, like it was so much. You could I can see why PS3 was such a, a shock to many people because PS3 was like the moment where they didn't give a fuck about gamers. But PS2 was that moment where they were so caring for the community that bought their consoles that they said, "You don't even need to buy these new games. You can just play your old ones on the system. Also, you don't even you don't need to buy anything from this new generation. You can just play. You can have PS1 games for the rest of your life." And it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, also, like, <laughs> the thing was, it has, like, it gave it that new feeling. It just, like, it had, like, the coolest interface. Oh, man. Um, that was like, cool. I did not know for the longest time that those, that little cube city represented the, how much, how much stuff you had in your memory card. Yo, yeah, that was, that yeah, was, that, like, right. the, yeah, when you open it up, it just, like, goes in that, like, giant bunch of blocks. The blocks, yeah. yeah. And, like, I did not know for the longest time that represented how much space you have in your memory card. Exactly. I knew, <laughs> here's a funny thing, I knew, like, that little there was like a little spinning, the thing orbs, of spinning the orbs orb. that represent your disc player. Yeah. I did not know that represented my disc player until my PS2 stopped working. I was like, oh, oh really? my, yeah, my PS like, oh, this PS2 isn't reading disc. Oh, <laughs> a little disc reads. Oh, that's cool. Still sucks, but it's cool. <laughs> like it's a cool thing to notice. Right. It, also, I love those little um, models for the memory cards that represent your memory cards. Yeah, every bit of it was because yeah. like because even still like back then even still now it's just like. For some reason, it's just like it's just pictures, right? Well, probably some. I get lucky enough. Probably little get little, icon, get, little, get icons. little gifts. It's just little icons. It's, but like for the like when you like, I love how when you go to like the memory card, it's just like get little like little little models, little nice little little, little trophies or models or something. Yeah, they're they're, they're they're really cool. I love how simplistic the layout is. It's just so easy to understand. Well, yeah. it's easy to understand. And then like if you're a kid, once again, if you're a kid, you don't really care what those cubes mean. You're just playing a yeah. game. But it's still, like, really nice, the fact that it's not, like... But well, that, that well, was well, a, it, it, it was a then again, great little Then again, like, I think every single console from that generation had a good user interface, right? I mean, you look at, game, like, you look at GameCube, it has, had a good user interface. Very simple, very clean, just like... Uh, it had very simple, very clean. You had the, the cube, you can go around the cube to make the, go to options and all that stuff. But, uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't really care too much about GameCube because it wasn't my console. But, yeah, PS2, you could open it up. Go into go into the settings and all that stuff, and every little bit of it is so simple and easy. They took their time out to really like. All right, how how are we gonna display the memory card? Very simple little icons. How are we gonna display the data? How are we gonna say that you don't have any more data? How are we gonna explain the fact that you don't that this this disc doesn't read um, just from the jump, right? Um, so simple, so easy, and it's just it's such a clean interface. Um, you know, and it's, it was weird when I remember going to the PS3 and, like, the XMB uh, cross-media bar. I had to get used to that a little bit. Uh, it was such a different shot. It was such a change, but then again, it was such a change from the PS1 to PS2 as well, right? Uh, you're, like, always in yeah. your mind, you have expectations of the next generation of, like, okay, well, what is this going to look like? What is that going to look like? How is this going to look? Uh, and and I re everything was so different. Um, like the only thing that pissed me off, like it was the only console in that generation that only that that had like, that still had like two slots for for uh, controllers. <laughs> even though like every console, like even like every console was starting to have like four slots. 
Yeah, that was. And I was like, shit, I have, to, I, have to get, I have to buy this extra peripheral for, like, to play, uh, like, to have my other friends play. Yeah. And, like, because of that, most, like, a lot of games were just having two players only. Right, right. For, like, PS2. For PS2. Like, it just kind of made, pissed me off a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it was, um, no, I remember all, no, I, I agree with you. Whenever I'd have, like, a group of friends over, more than two, which wasn't often. I mean, it would just be me or yeah. like a couple of people. Uh, but when I did, it was like, all right, we had to pass the controller around. There weren't many games, and like, if it was, if I did have a four-player game, I would. I didn't have the adapter until you know that one time when we went over to Power Gamer and actually yeah. bought an adapter. I didn't have an adapter until then, and uh, it was like, if I wanted to play Crash Team Racing, I was like, oh, nope, that's not available. I mean, you can't play four-player on that, and I couldn't imagine all the times when that would have like saved like saved the switch up and pass over. I mean, again, this was, like, it seems like this was the compromise between, uh, just like where Xbox One had a compromise for power, it seems like this was the compromise for multiplayer at the time, where it's like, all right, well, we're going to just put two, we don't need to put four, and instead we're going to put a, we're just, we're going to primarily focus on CDs, DVDs, we're going to focus on the multimedia aspect of our console, and they did, and that was a really smart move, brilliant move on yeah. Sony, but, yeah, it did compromise the fact that we couldn't play, you know, as much as we wanted. Also, I didn't know there were US, I didn't know those were USB drives until, like, a couple years ago, like I didn't like pay attention to the PS2 until well later, like until I had a PS3 and I was like, oh. I I did <laughs> I did when I first got the eye toy. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I. I was I, like, oh USB. Well, that's like that's before I really started using computers much. So I was right. like, USB wasn't really a thing for me back then. Like, yeah, well then back then you didn't. I mean, USB was new as well. Right. Yeah. I mean, it was they had the the different switch ups as well. Uh, so there were the different connect connectors. Um. Yeah, um, there are so many titles you could talk about on PS2 that are just really good, and so many different uh, con games that came out of that con console generation that were awesome. Um, but most of all, I, I just I look at that console as a graphical step and just as such a such a dynamic step to from where we were before. Like of all console of all the consoles, like I think that is the one where it's like you go twenty years from now. 50 years from, like, I think, I think maybe 20 years from now, this is going to be another retro console. Uh, there's, well, then again, there's just so many people that love this game, this console, that I think that it also would be odd if PlayStation didn't do the same thing where it's, like, PS2 Mini. I'd love to see something like that. Like, that, yeah. that's deserving of it. Um, it. I think it just has that much of a status, just like uh, NES or SNES. Um, Games-wise, probably not. I mean, the, the games aren't as legendary, but the, the, the console itself has that legendary status. Um, if they just made a PS4 that looked like a PS2, people would fucking buy that shit up. Like, I don't understand why they don't... I don't know why they just don't use the shells. Like, just yeah. use a shell and make another... I'm sure, like, that, like, that like that, P, that PS4 looks like a PS1 is, like, sold out like crazy. The only, the only way you can get it is, like, it, buy it on UE for, like, a billion bucks. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> it, it, I, you know, um, but yeah, PS2. Beautiful, uh, beautiful box. And, uh... Talking about beautiful boxes, and that doesn't... I, I keep doing these switch-ups that are awful, but let's talk about... Hey guys, if you're listening to this on At Democracy, I want you to send me some questions, uh, whatever questions you want. The reason why I brought this to At Democracy is that I'd like more people to listen to it, and I think that the network here really enjoys my content. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to have you guys send me some questions if you want about anything, really. I'm also going to have another podcast, Cartoon Chat, which will be reviving and coming back uh, on Sundays. So guys, sending questions at techgamingpodcast at gmail.com. That's again, Podcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. I'm Brian Swan, and uh, keep watching. This is a Tech Game Podcast. And what the fuck happened to do boxes? I don't know. I tried. Box office? <laughs> I don't know. What the fuck? <laughs> it failed. It failed. But <laughs> but we we got a lot of content from uh, Comic-Con. Uh, but, of course, coming into this week, coming into this week, this will be coming out uh, a week after, but Guys, uh, unfortunately, what we're seeing is bad. There's marginal reviews for Suicide Squad. Uh, we talked about it a little bit in the car. I mean, you know, uh, yeah. This just kind of pushes on the the if fact. You, that yeah, if you look it up on Ron Demands right now, I think it's like thirty five percent. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. Like so far, DC isn't doing so well. Uh, with their cinematic universe, I mean, because like I, I was looking, I'm looking, I'm looking forward. I'm still kind of looking forward to Suicide Squad. The trailer still looks so, so good. I was just like, uh, um, oh, you look, look, looking at Rotten Tomatoes. Oh man, Rolling for ro Rolling Stones gave it a one out of four. 
Rotten Tomatoes has a 36%, and IGN, well, I don't, I don't trust IGN reviews. So IGN did a review of Independence Day Resurgence after getting money from the, from I, from Independence Day for their uh, E3 coverage, so, like, they will review anything just to make money off of it. <laughs> like, they'll, I don't trust IGN. I don't know why they, they got so popular for their movie reviews. They're so unworthy. Like, compared to so many other movie review co- sometimes uh, sites. They, I sometimes forget they do movie reviews. Yeah, it's like, just go back to games. Stop. Well, I, look at movie, I look at movie reviews for, like, the hottest town. Like, oh, IGN pops up. Okay, yeah, they do movie reviews. I forgot. Uh, I, whenever I see that, I just go to the actual uh, the actual places that commit to movies and don't just, like, yeah. get paid to do movie reviews. Uh, so, you know, I go to Collider. I go to, like, places like that. Shmo's No is a pretty cool place. I mean, the movie, um, the plot was okay, but, like, this didn't have enough Call of Duty. So <laughs> not enough pixels. Wow, yeah. <laughs> but um yeah, uh, because they used to do just they they used to do I'm not trying to do a tangent here, but I know IGN used to do video game reviews only, like video game movie reviews. And that's what they really focused on, like because it was video game movies. Yeah. And that was it. Then they started going into like movies that didn't make sense for them. And it's like alright. Let's just do movies. And let's just do movies because hey, let's make more money. But yeah, I'm, I'm gonna just stick to the people that actually know movies, and I've spent time doing movies and have uh, done it for a very long time. Yeah. And, you know, well, uh, well. but Suicide Squad isn't uh, isn't looking good. Uh, if this is as bad as they say it is, and it's more marginal than than good, I think that there's gonna be a fan meter that people will probably love it, uh, and I don't think that I, I want to like it. I want like it looked so good from the trailers. It looks good. It I looks I'm so better than the, it looks a lot more. It looks better than Batman v Superman from the trailers so far. I mean, I'm not trying another tangent here, and this is another kind of disappointment for Will Smith. Um, and, and I mean, he did After Earth and all that stuff, and I really wish that I was. I thought this was gonna be another movie that was like, okay, well, it's Will Smith. He usually does good movies, and if this is a bad movie, then I'm gonna my mind's gonna be blown. Uh, like, I mean, dude, you signed on for this? Okay, whatever. But uh, that was a ball resurgence. So. Yeah, he didn't. He, I'm glad. Yeah, I'm glad he didn't get on the show. That would that would have been even worse. But yeah. Sorry, guys. Back to Suicide Squad and DC in general. I mean, we saw some really good. Fo- the, the weird thing is, we saw some really good footage for uh, for uh, Wonder Woman. We saw that trailer. We saw Justice League the trailer, and both of them looked good. Looked really good. Uh, I enjoyed the little back. I, had, yeah, I showed you the footage, right, of uh, J- Justice League. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it looked good. It looked like it, well, it looked like Spider Man and Iron Man, like that. That it looked like the back and forth that we saw from. Uh, Civil War, uh, and it looks like they're, they're starting to borrow ties from Marvel, which isn't a bad thing. I'd love to see them start to learn from that because, I mean, being dark, like being super dark, I know they want to try to do that, but it doesn't seem like it's working out for them. And we have that such good news, and now we're going to back going back into the oh well, it's bad news. It yeah. doesn't look like it's going to turn out all that well. Yeah. It's going to be a box office hit. It seems like it. Hopefully, it'll be a box office hit. I mean, yeah. usually. Because they wanted this to be like Guardians of the Galaxy, where it got high reviews, it was really popular, but if if it's going to turn out like this, and people are kind of expecting it to fail too because of Batman v Superman, they're like, oh, DC's season. Uh, yeah, I personally thought that was a bad movie. Like, yeah. Yeah. It, um, it, like, it's, um, like a, uh, like my expectation, I'm just like hoping I'm just gonna leave the theater being like, okay, that was okay. That was, that was okay. Like, I'm just like, that's what I'm hoping to leave the theater like. Right. I, well, um, with, what? Um, because uh, I remember I was just I remember leaving Batman v Superman with uh, with a sour feeling. Right. Um, like when it comes down to like uh, you know the superhero movie industry, like it's like a uh, Marvel's just the big empire right now. There nobody's in competition with Marvel. Marvel's just on top, and everybody's just trying to everybody's just trying to go after the the type of, type of money Marvel right. has. Like, like I said before in the cards, like Marvel's on page it's on chapter four, DC's on like page one. They're about to get to page three with Suicide Squad, but I don't know. The way that they really kind of launched this was weird. The way that they launched the cinematic universe was weird. They Ooh. went from Superman, from the super, the first, like... Because Man of Steel just seemed like a Man one-off. Of Steel, Man of Steel was marginal reviews, and then Batman v Superman was bad It was bad to marginal. Now we have Suicide Squad, bad to marginal. I mean, and then, and then, we, have, and then we have Marvel. They're so far ahead. They're making movies that, of people that we don't even know. Like, like, I mean, we have DC making movies of characters that we know still, and then we have Marvel making movies of characters that we really don't know. Doctor Strange, I have no idea who that guy is. Yeah. We just saw some trailer, or just they had some new footage for it uh, at Comic-Con. Looks 
insanely good. I I'm, dude, they make they're making Netflix series of like the, people of like stuff people don't even know. Yeah, I mean, dude, you cannot you cannot get more obscure than Jessica Jones, <laughs> and that and that and that Netflix series turned out really great. Right, um, it like it like they're like uh, Marvel just knows what they're doing. It's like weird because like. Nobody really tried this thing before because, like, Marvel was just doing it. There was just, like, the whole idea, like, of the, ex, like, movies that are connected to each other, which is, like, surprisingly new. It's surprisingly new. Because, like, yeah. you know, there's sequels and, like, spin offs, but, like, there was never really, like, you know, this is, like, its own thing, but, like, it's connected to this world, and, like, this is also something, but it could not, this is also in the same world as this. Yeah, but because by the time that, uh, by the time that. X, by the time that X Men. By the time uh, uh, Iron Man and Avengers came out, uh, X-Men had just started Days of Future Past around the same time. So X-Men was dabbling in it the same time Avengers came out, so they were still late to the curve to what Marvel was, was already doing. Uh, and they adapted pretty well. Like, Fox adapted pretty well to Days of Future Past came out in 2011. Um, I think it was 2011. I think, I, I, no, I know, like, Days of Future Past came out, like, somewhat, like, two years after Avengers or something like that. Really? It like sorry, not days, sorry, not days of future past. Uh, I mean, uh, first class. First, no, thank you. First class. Uh, yeah, I think for, the first class came out at the same time as Avengers, which was twenty eleven, I believe. Uh, first class. Really? I want to say probably. probably. Uh, I've never seen 2011. that. Twenty eleven. Yes, same. Okay. Yeah, we're on the same time, May twenty fifth. So yeah, was that the same weekend? Holy crap! Did they call the same weekend? I don't, I don't think so. May twenty fifth. May fourth. Twenty. No. Oh. Yeah, X Men X Men came out before Avengers because so they got to the curve. They got to the curve early, but they knew it because they saw what was going on. They still don't have the same connected universe because I mean I think that Fantastic Four, if they if it did well, would have really solved that. problem. They have their X Men universe. That's the thing. But the X Men universe is their thing. Because like they, because like, um, because like oh, they're a part of their expansions like the little Wolverine movies. I mean, they were I get they're probably they're probably still thinking about doing movies of like other solo. No, yeah. X Men people. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, so like, it, like their their X Men universe is still their expanded universe in a way. Yeah, the odd thing is though, they're now they're in the spot where, uh, I mean, we're in the spot now where, uh, and I don't. People keep talking about how Deadpool could pop up in the next X Men, which is supposed, which the next X Men is supposed to be set in the. It 90s, doesn't like the movie doesn't treat itself like it's connected so far. Like, well, they have colossal from X Men, but like, yeah, they, they do it. it in a, they do it in a very four fall it, way, but it, yeah, but like it's it's weird. It's like. You don't it have the funding for this. Yeah, <laughs> it, it doesn't seem like it's in the same universe as of right now. We have to see what happens in a Deadpool sequel. Right. It, it like it, I mean, Deadpool sequel was already greenlit, so like we can see what happens there. No, I mean like, but yeah. if it if it was set in the same, if they were going to make an X Men movie and and Deadpool was going to pop in, it would have to be post twenty sixteen, because yeah. I mean he doesn't get his powers until twenty sixteen, or he doesn't get his new. He, it's he he clearly has a smartphone. He clearly has all yeah. that stuff. So it's not like it's set in the eighties or nineties. Like it's clearly set in the post BC world. So they can't. It can't be in the nineties. You can't have a Deadpool pop up in the next night in the nineties X Men. You can't have any of that. Um, and so we're in the spot now where Deadpool's like in twenty sixteen, and they're making movies like they have. What is the new one? Apocalypse, which is in the eighties, and the new one's supposed to be in the and the next one's in the nineties. They're supposed to be an X twenty three or some other. I mean, it's sort Fantastic of thing. Four. They probably like connected. They, the oh, that that would have been great, but they fucked up. Because like Doctor Doom is like one of the best Marvel villains ever. They're yeah. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I made this. I made this beeline, and we have. Oh, um, but again, going back to DC. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, we have to see how. I think the next lineup, the next few movies are. It's weird because I remember back in twenty. I'm back last year, I think, or the year before. Um, Marvel announced their lineup, and it, in like twenty seventeen looks so far away. Now we're like twenty, we're in the middle of twenty sixteen, so like it's coming pretty fast. Yeah. Um, but what we see here is we have to find out how Justice League really turns out to really see if they can do it. It's like it's um, it's always it looks good from the trailers, but then like Zack Snyder usually has movies that like looks good at the trailers and then turns out in. Yeah. Or he has trailers that reveal everything about the movie, like the second trailer of Batman v Superman. Oh uh, yeah. Remember that? They they, they announce that. they pretty much give you the entire plot of the movie. And I mean, like, like uh, like with the uh, um Justice League, it, it like um, it looks like it's having like some kind of more personality to it because the Flash is like adding like some sort of level of humor to it. Yeah, this is like, a lot more yeah. cheesy and and 
laugh. It, it, they, it feels like it feels like they're they're going definitely for the Marvel Marvel crowd this time around. It doesn't. That's what it just feels like that way. Like oh. This doesn't seem like, oh, I, I still still really don't know yet. It's just like... I mean, with the way that they have the cheeky... Because, like, before, they didn't have that with Batman v Superman or any of the any of the movies. It wasn't as... It wasn't as... In that tone. Well, so far, I only had, like, two movies, Man of Steel. Man of Steel and yeah. Batman v Superman. Both were, like... Didn't have, like, that... Oh. like, Suicide Squad is, like, definitely humor... Humor... Some, some, well, true. Yeah. From the trailers, from what we know. No, like, no it will be... Humor. I'm sure I'm sure it's full of humor. Humor, yeah. yeah. Yeah, apparently that humor doesn't land because this movie doesn't do too well. But um, <laughs> yeah, from the front of reviews. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, I'm just, I was joking. But um, I don't know how this. How, but uh, we again, it's like every single DC movie. It's like oh, we have to find out how this movie does to really test DC's waters. Yeah. And now it's Suicide Squad, and they're That's not doing too Superman, well. And you have like you have to be optimistic. And now and now you have to wait for not to wait for Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman looks great, but. Like, Fan fucking tastic. We don't know how it's gonna turn out because all these other movies have pretty much been marginal to bad reviews. I mean, you can have a, you can have a personal love for it, but overall, it's been marginal to bad reviews for most of the movies from DC. Um, jumping over to Marvel, I mean, like we said before, they're in chapter, they're far ahead. They're in, they're up in chapter eight or chapter seven or so far ahead. Uh, that they can just expand their world in ways that we haven't really seen from any other cinematic universe. And the cinematic universe thing is, like you said, so new. Uh, Doctor Strange coming out, Black Panther coming soon, Spider-Man, like, Spider-Man, th- the Spider-Man thing blows my mind. I'm so excited for that. Uh, and all yeah. the, and the fact that, you know, they have these Avengers coming in, that's gonna be funny. I can't wait to see the banter, or, like, even more banter with Iron Man and Spider-Man. Um, I, I wanna see, like, Daredevil pop in. And like, like, or like anyone from the Netflix series. Like, I'm curious people, to see if they do that. I, yeah, I'm curious like, to see if they do that. People from Agents and stuff. Um, you know, um, y- yeah, like, uh, Agents season four is getting Ghost Rider, and that's gonna be cool. Ghost Rider. So, uh, well, <laughs> Nicholas, <laughs> the last Ghost Rider. No, we no, have. no, we're not getting Nicholas Cage. <laughs> Nicholas Cage. I'm oh, sorry, I had to laugh. I had to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas Cage in the Avengers. <laughs> we gotta get. <laughs> Why are you trying to steal the national treasure, Nick? It's, <laughs> we're in a different movie this time. Come on, Jesus! Actually, Nick, the the national treasure movies were pretty good, to be honest. I'm not, I'm not trying to go off. I never seen them. I, like I heard the, good things the, about them. They're very good. They're very I good. I don't remember hearing bad things about them. Did you, uh, were there bad things about them? They, they were really good. I loved them. I, I like that. Yeah, I, 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 I haven't seen them. I just I I, I don't. I, I said before I don't remember hearing bad things about them. So. Yeah. No, no, I just imagine Nicolas Cage. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, he, that was not that would not work. That would be so weird. Iron Man lock on the dollar bill. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Captain America, they're trying to steal the declaration from us. <laughs> like what? What the hell? What? Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> it's Captain America, so what? Captain America. No, uh, but yeah, uh, you know, it's it's so. You. you Iron Man's such a great movie. Cap, like the cool well, thing. Was, the Marvel, the, 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 I, like, like the only like Marvels had only mediocre movies. Like with like you know, I think like Iron Man I'm, Two. I, Iron Man Two is considered mediocre. I really like Iron Man Two. I love. Like, uh, I yeah. love Iron Man Two. Yeah, um, but like a. Uh, um, I, the Thor movies were like uh, were uh, like mediocre uh, uh, well, to, to critics. Okay. Uh, I I only seen Thor one. I like I like Thor one. I no, I'm saying they were okay yet. for for you. Not mediocre. Yeah, they were, they were I mean, okay. yeah, I mean, not mediocre. Okay. Yeah. Um, like everything has been received decent. Well, yeah. Like Mar, like their lowest stuff is just still received decent. It's like of course. Like I haven't really had a bad movie. They haven't had a bad movie, and DC's coming out the gate literally with yeah. like marginal, like okay to bad yeah. movies. Like there hasn't been like a good striking movie. Um, I think the cool thing that they've done is they've made almost every single character. Like we haven't done. They haven't done it this generation or this phase, but. Phase one, it was Iron Man's turn to really get people into the Avengers, like Iron Man one, two. Yeah. Iron Man one and two led into a Iron Man one well, was just a gamble. Oh god, like, dude, I can't. I, that's so. It was so crazy that one. That 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 one was so good, uh, and I love that Robert Downey Jr. just does it so well. Like, if that was you him, can't like yeah, I can. I probably I probably like literally cry if like Robert Downey Jr. just stopped doing Iron Man. Like, oh my god, I can't imagine anyone else playing that role. I remember so much better. I remember like last year they or earlier this year they were like. Uh, he was like, yeah, I'll be up for Iron Man 4. Uh, I'd be up for it. And then he was like, oh, yes, I'd love to see another one. I'd love to see another Iron Man. Yeah. Even though, like, even though Iron Man 3 kind of ended on that weird note. Uh, yeah. And I, like, look, Iron Man 1 and 2 led into Avengers, 
and then we saw Captain America. Iron our, our Man, our Man Three was like was more positive than the trailers made it look. Yeah, it, you it, saw it, you saw it right. Yeah, well, let's talk about Iron it, Man Three. I'm sorry, but yeah. I, I look. I understand the director wanted to go like we've heard all the directors things like he wanted to put it, it, it he wanted to yeah. get in this he wanted to put it in this direction that was different. But honestly, I wanted to see that terrorist. I wanted to see the actual darkness of the Mandarin. I wanted to see yeah. this guy that was going to fucking kill everyone if he didn't get his way. And they made that guy a fucking clown. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, god damn it. It fits in with the other Iron Man movies, though. It, it was still a good movie. Uh, but that was a funny plot twist, though. So. That was like, it was funny. He had, him up, he had him up to a gun. He was like, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, you know, you know it was funny, but the, but the thing was, like, that, that white dude did not... Like, he was not a good yeah. man. He, he, the finishing touch was not... That last that last act was like, okay. Well, uh, to, be honest, to be honest, that pl- for me, that plot twist made it worth it. It was just so funny. It was, no, it was funny, but it was... Uh, I guess it, it changes it from the generic action uh, superhero yeah. movie, right? Because it, it would have been generic action superhero movie for Iron Man again, right? And that's it. But... I mean, still, I, I still wanted to see the Mandarin. I still wanted to see them. Oh my god, dude! Like the like, trailers are like misleading me so much. I know. I was like, oh my god, this is you dark. Will, I still remember. You it, will never see me coming. <laughs> that was that was the guys. That was the guys' voice. You will never see you me coming. Like so, you had like I, I remember the trailer. Like had down. sad music. He's had like Iron Man. Like all the stuff the blowing up. All the stuff blowing up. His suit going out and shit. Air like, Force One exploding. Like you, like your assumption is he gonna quit being Iron Man? It's like what's going on? Yeah, that was God, I, I, and they did such a good job with Iron Man Three. I mean, I'm, that's, for everything that I hate about the fact that it wasn't the Mandarin, I, he, they did a really good job with Iron Man Three. Iron Man Two, I know people have a have a quip with. I like it. I enjoy it. I love it. Actually, I feel like it didn't go far enough with his anxiety it was, issues. Yeah. It, what, from coming from, from for three, Aven- for three coming out of Avengers. Yeah. No, they did. A re- I think they did. A, what do you mean they did for three? Not far enough. Like uh, what, what were you looking for? Anxiety. No, I mean, uh, what were you, what were you looking for? I mean, it's like, uh, like, a, like, I guess, like, more, like, carrying over more, like a bit serious? more reference to Avengers. Like, no, they, they like did. Take, huh? They did. Because, like, of that, that driving force was, he kept seeing shit, it fucked him up. That was the thing with Fireman 3, like, I, like, I don't even know anymore, what am I doing? What, what is my point? Like, that was the whole driving force. Oh, yeah. The reason why it was so dark was, he did not feel like he was doing enough for Iron Man, that he was, like, remembering and, like, it was, yeah. like, that, no, that was how the trailer showed so dark, it was, like, yeah. he was feeling that way, and then the Mandarin came out of nowhere, and he was destroying shit, and it was, like, oh, shit, like, Tony has to man up, and he's, like, he's obviously not in a good condition to do this, but he still has to man up, and he's, like, like, that was why those trailers were so, like, Dude, like, you had spent three movies, you, had, you already had one in, Iron Man 1 and 2 to get to know Tony Stark, and you had connected with Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. And so when they put those trailers out, it was like, holy shit. And yeah. the, uh, Captain America, yeah, have you seen uh, The Winter Soldier? Have you I, seen saw, I saw it with you. I'm sorry, it's been a look. It's been years, okay? <laughs> I, I, I just look, uh, but... Cap- Captain America one and Captain America two really good movies. Actually, Pe- I haven't seen one still yet. But, uh, we'll but two is yeah. two is brilliant. Yeah. Uh, it's it definitely changes the entire like the reason why it was so successful. The reason why it did so well in the box office was it was like just like Marvel. It was a new take on the superhero genre that was already like yeah. And Marvel's already. not just keep focus on that. Just keep like uh, every new IP they use with Marvel. They just like. They do some type of new tone with it, or some type of different tone with it. Right. Like when, like Marvel will get, establish like a new tone and keep that tone. Like Marvel it's like light or dark. Even if like even their most serious movies still have like, still have more per- so, still have still have personality to them. Oh man, like dude, all the all the good scenes in 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 uh, all the fel- all the Falcon uh the the fel- that starting like yeah. the starting scene with Falcon, well the soon to be Falcon and Captain America, where he's like on your left. <laughs> Like, oh, left. Like, left. like oh, yeah, because like all because Mar- like Marvel's, um, because like their brand, they're like in terms of popularity, I think they even surpassed Star Wars. Yeah, it's it's like like because like now you can like Marvel can release any new IP and just like put the Marvel name on it. Like, and uh, this is going to be re- this is in the cinematic universe. So like, okay, I'll watch it. I'll watch it. Yeah, and they'll uh, bring in millions and millions and millions of dollars. Uh, I, there's nothing that really <laughs> like they can like. Like if they like, like they can like buy the license to like Man of Steel, and they're just like put Marvel, <laughs> Marvel on Man of it. Steel. <laughs> Marvel, but it's it's oh a Marvel God. movie now. Oh my! I'll go see it. <laughs> Jesus. 
It's like Marvel buys DC. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Like, imagine the... Put, the, Mar- well, put least- the Marvel symbol on Batman v Superman. That would just change everyone's opinion. To, to be honest, I'd love to see a Marvel versus DC movie, but that would take too much. Uh, no, uh, no, like uh, that'd be like fifty years of making. Well, there, there is like Mar- there is like Justice League versus Avengers comics. I would like to see like, like a a movie adaptation of that. But like, <laughs> fucking Zack Snyder's There's already a, ruining like the already you know, destroying just, just, Justice League shit. So Superman's like, already dead, or he's coming back. But you no, know, no, like no, like it's he's not. Like, he's not going to be. A, he's not going to be in Justice League, and he probably is. I think. He, I feel like he's going to show up at the end. Probably the second movie because there's going to be two parts apparently. Uh, there is, but like, I feel like he's like. Ending plot convenience. Right, right. But it's like a going, know, going back to Marvel. Like, it, like a yeah. yeah well, I mean, we're going back to like yeah, DC I, I, Avengers. I, like, uh, it's just like the DC universe is just so bad right now. It's yeah. like, it, like, it, um, it's yeah, it, like you just really can't really have that crossover at the moment because like, yeah, they're it, so behind. And it's no, just, like, you know, like I said, we're chapter eight, and but. You know, um, that's why I said it's like 50 years of making. But I'm sure, like, there's, I'm sure there's like one guy in the Marvel office that's probably was thinking, you know, maybe we should have this Just League cro- Marvel crossover. Then they went to go see Batman v Superman. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> uh, try again, but uh, but no. Um, and there's and we have all these other people trying to do cinematic universes too. Yeah, uh, and that makes sense. But um, it's just it yeah. keeps on expanding and it's gonna expand and. People are going to try it. I mean, there's going to be a Hanna-Barbera cinematic universe, so... Uh, you <laughs> I know, want to see that. I'm I, curious. I, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to fucking just fall on impact, but... It's gonna, <laughs> stupid. It's, it's, That's so stupid. I want to see it. scooby doo doo is going to box off his bomb, I swear it's to God. Like your, it's, like, it's like you're having that, like, friend who's not, like, your best friend, but he's just doing, like, a stupid dare that might get him to hurt himself. You want to see it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> just do it, man. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, but... Uh... And I'll, I'll put this into Batman v Superman, but first, it's like, nothing's gonna, nothing really changed. Nothing, no, there's nothing more... I remember barely. Uh, it was, it had, yeah, I remember barely uh, going in after seeing these Iron Man movies. I didn't see any Thor movie. I didn't see, I saw The Incredible Hawk, uh, and I saw, uh, and I saw Cap- Captain America. I don't know if Captain America was before, it was had to be before. Uh, Avengers, but I can't remember. What do you mean, Captain America? Yeah, for the first Captain America, I can't remember if it was. Before. Captain it was... America. Well, it's not like the movie's called Captain America: The First Avenger. I no, I don't remember. It had to be right. It came out. <laughs> it was before Avengers, dude. Okay, I want to make sure because like it was. The it, movie it was, was the literally year. a trailer for the Avengers. Was it in the same year? I swear to God, like. Um, uh, probably a year prior. America. But like, I don't think it was, it was not in the same year. No, not the, the first Avenger. All right, <laughs> gotta Google search this. Yeah, no, it was, in, it was in 2011. It was, it was? July, July, oh, July, uh, 22nd, 2011, and then, uh, okay. oh, the Avengers was in 2012. I keep thinking that it's... Oh, uh, there we go. Yeah, I was, okay, yeah, because it was after my... Oh, first, then it wasn't, yeah, so, then yeah, that means uh, X-Men First Class wasn't in any... No, no, it was still before. That means X-Men was still before. Um, no, yeah, I mean, that's when I mean, X-Men First Class was in the same year as Avengers as well. Was it? No, it was It was in the same year as Captain America. First yeah, Star. yeah, so, like, yeah, I had a, I had a feeling, because, like, Cause, I, don't think I don't think Fox is that... They're stupid sometimes. Like, no, no, but they, that means they jumped the gun early on doing a sort of prequel crossover, yeah. sort of come together. But no, um, I remember, uh, I I remember saying, like release a movie around the Avengers because like even even like like a, everyone knew that movie was gonna be a success. Right, right. And people would just throw their movies out there in case Avengers tickets were sold out. Yeah. So. I but yeah I, no I uh, I remember yeah <laughs> seeing seeing Iron Man seeing Captain America uh, seeing Cap- Iron Man two seeing. The Incredible Hawk. I didn't care for Thor. I really didn't care. Like I remember the trailer for it. I was like, this dude, whatever. All right, cool. But uh, when Avengers came around, holy fuck! No, no, like, like, nobody my, really like, cared. Yeah, nobody really cared for Thor. But like, uh, yeah, like when yeah again when like, Avengers came out, yeah. it's just like every bit of that movie. Like I remember sitting in the seat, like so excited. Like the, when the first credits started rolling, we start we saw the Marvel logo pop in, and then they started with that. Cool, like that, that cool. Uh, that was like following vehicles going into like some sort of area where it was like the Tesseractor. Yeah, yeah. like well, like yeah, after it seemed like yeah. Uh, like, in Loki and Loki's power, of course. Interesting note. Uh, Ethan Hawke said that he wanted his character to be killed off in the Avengers because his because he was basically useless. They kept because of course he's basically a zombie. 
for the entire time, and he, like in scenes he would literally like play out a heart attack after every roll. He was like, "You can just kill me right now. <laughs> you can just kill me." And, and like, because he was basically useless, like, and he felt that he was useless, like, and he wanted to dive more into Hawkeye. And I wish that they actually did dive more into Hawkeye because he was basically useless until yeah. that end scene. But every part of that movie is like, "Oh man!" They like, made more. They, they made more important than Age of Ultron. Yeah. And no. I, no. I there's an, the the problem with Age of Ultron was it was never going to top Avengers in the way that yeah. the way that was like you pictured it was like. Oh man! All of these guys are coming together, and the way that it was like so, like so well. Combined. Yeah, it, like well, like, after after Avengers is like what like made it, like made people like uh, flip it like now now this expand universe stuff makes sense because Avengers just is like this big reward for like it's it, Avengers is a reward for looking at like all these movies beforehand. So right. now you're just like cut up you're like you're like caught up you're like in the midst of like knowing all these what all these references mean exactly so like now so like now um you now you got like people investing in like you know in like trying to see all this marvel stuff like trying to see all these marvel like trying to see all these marvel movies beforehand like exactly because like as, as you know i was sort of for like i didn't care about thor you didn't care about thor <laughs> like uh we you know, like now with the expanding universe happening, you, know, you, you can. You I still like, won't watch those movies, but I'll still. I'll, I'll, I'll watch well, them because I want to get the references. I'm I'm joking, joking, I want to know what I'm they're joking. talking about. Yeah, joking, yeah, I'll watch yeah, them, but but yeah, no, uh, like yeah, now like now like now people will care about them because like now Marvel's just come out with anything. It's like, even if it like looks iffy, he's like, I want to know. I like it. Probably could be an important part of the story. So exactly, on you top, see it. Yeah, on top of that. What makes it even more prevalent is the fact that Avengers was a good movie. Well, not a good yeah. movie, a great movie. Like, those, yeah. there were scenes, like, the comedy wasn't there unnecessarily because those moments where it's like Loki's just standing there and Iron Man's like undoing his, <laughs> he's like undoing his like Iron Man suit and he's like, and Loki's just standing there, of course, and, and he's just like, well, I have an army. Oh, we have a hawk. <laughs> like, that was such a, like, oh my god. Like, I, or I always, yeah. my mind's blown already thinking about it. The like, cinematic oh sequences are amazing. Like, I, I feel, I'm like, but the shot I remember that was so good is, like, What's when up? Iron Man was just flying to his, when Iron Man flew, uh, when Loki was in already in his, like, office building or something, right. when Iron Man just, like, flew to his little building. Right. And, like, and I just, I, I, that shot is, like, it just, like, stayed in my mind. Was, I, just, gotcha. I love that shot. Right, right. I, I I wish I knew a lot which shot that was. I, I there were there are multiple sh- shots where it's like yeah, the, well, where the movie is so good. Like I mean, there was like that movie has so well that movie had so many beautiful cinematic shots that, like in general. Right, right. I mean, it was such it was a well it was a well cinema it was a, a, a well designed movie, a well scripted movie. Every piece of that was like com- yeah. a come together of everything, and it, it also like took advantage of like like just like the fact that it was like a come together. So like they, I, I love I love the that group epic shots. Scene. Like oh, group <laughs> shot, Duh. group shot. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that the music swells. You see, yeah. the, you see the three the the one eighty pan where it just shows everyone. Like I like my like you know one of the best group shots when they all all of them have like Loki caught in a corner at the end. Like they like you see them you see oh and they're just. Like, <laughs> That was a funny shot. Yeah, that was a cool one. Um, yeah, I mean, in the way that they tied that into, um, I mean, again, like, we're getting excited about Marvel, right? And I don't think any of us, like, I don't think I was, I don't think I'm excited about, I wasn't as excited getting out of theaters for anything DC-wise about, as much as I was about this. Um, but, you know, the way that, I want to, I, like, I want, yeah, you want, for you want to. But yeah, I you, want to, like, uh, like, Batman, like, all these characters are saying Batman, Superman, bad. I can't, that can't be bad. It's a bad, it's, it's a, a crossover, it's a Batman movie. How can it possibly be bad? Right. I mean, well, he's like, have I, you seen, like, I, they, they managed, they somehow did it. They managed just, I don't know how, but they fucking did it. I, I mean, again, like, this was, this was the failure of the fact that they didn't make a solo Batman movie before, so coming together and all that stuff, and there were multiple things already inside of it yeah, where it just yeah, got like failed. They, they're trying to rush it, they, they didn't have, t- they didn't, like, you know, make a Man of Steel 2 to establish, to re Superman and... To, to, to like, establish Superman story. They, yep, it was yeah, all like, rushed, it's all rushed, like, it's still... You, it's still rushing. They're you doing... still love a character at the seven, second movie, even though we still didn't get much ca- development character. out of him. Exactly. I mean, and uh, yep, it's like they're still rushing. Justice League is coming out after Wonder Woman, and that's it. Like, I don't think. Well, there's a Batman movie like, what, coming in. Yeah, you know, with Marvel but... now, you can like you can kill off any character and still have a big impact. We did. Could we spent like? Could we like we spent like you know some in, you know investing time in it, like more well, than, no, more than one movie. The great thing is about like um, um, additionally, the great thing is that. I mean, going back to this, it's like, you go after Avengers, right? I mean, you, they've spent so much time, and between Avengers 1 and Avengers 2, of course, you have, so, you have uh, not so, well, 
Civil War Civil War was after yeah tough. Um, you have with the Winter Soldier you have Iron Man 3 which they did such a great job putting the continuity in there like 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 we talked about before like going back to Marvel I'm sorry but going back to Marvel where it was like uh, they they reward you for watching prior movies Iron Man 3 is a is a solid statue to that yeah like if you don't know what the fuck happened in, in the Avengers you will not know what the fuck happened to Tony Stark uh, and why he's feeling this way. Like, they explain it in the trailer a little bit, but it's like, you know, everything that happened after when I went into that portal, and that portal screwed me up. And you only you will only feel even more invested in that character after you watch the Avengers. Um, and then you have uh, the Winter Soldier, which, you know, Captain America finally gets a movie that's so good and so uh, diverse and so much different. I think they, they spent so much time with Captain America now that if... Chris Evans doesn't want... I think Chris Evans says he wants to... What is it? No, not Chris Evans. Uh, that was DC, but no. Um, actor but, who, just say the but, actor who played this character. No, no, it was Chris Evans, but I'm saying that oh. like the the actor of Superman wants to play Superman until he until he cannot literally play Superman. That's that's the Superman actor currently. But oh. uh, for Captain America, if Chris Evans hypothetically could not play or didn't want to play uh, Superman, um, Captain America anymore, you have the Falcon who could easily take his spot because... He's literally, like, been so invested alongside Captain America that it's, like, the clear choice uh, and the clear obvious sign that that's the next, that's the next one up, right? Like, they've, some, they've done such a good job that passing off a new generation of, of Avengers, like, a next Avengers lineup would be so brilliant. Like, after, after Infinity War, there's clearly going to be some recast, not recasting, but new characters coming in. That's why people think that Fantastic Four is going to be purchased by Marvel by, by 2020. That This is just a clear... Like, well, like, uh, well, I, I, I have, like... I'm gonna I'm gonna be on one now. I feel like I have a feeling later on keep the Fantastic Four lives because Fox just like wants to be a dick. Well, probably no, probably I'm just saying that it makes it would make sense for yeah, them if they if they want to make some uh, if they want to have a connected experience. But then again, there are other characters they could go into. I mean, Ant Man is fairly new. Ant Man I think is gonna get a sequel within by uh, before I think 2020. I don't know if it's gonna be after or before Infinity War. But we're going to, we're going to see a new Ant Man. We have Guardians of the Galaxy two coming out next yeah. year. I mean. It, Captain America's Captain America's story is kind of wrapped up. The cool thing is what we're seeing now is that the old guard is kind of phasing out. Like Iron Man doesn't see it. it he wants to do a four, but we haven't really heard any. Well, a lot of people are like, saying like in like after the well, Infinity War, like Inhumans isn't coming out. Huh? Inhumans has been canceled. As yeah, uh, like no, a lot of people are saying like it might be picked. It's just like t- it, um, it's it's been taken off the schedule. It's been hit, taken off the schedule because of the fact that Ag- Agents of Shield has already talked about. It's like. Primarily focused on Inhumans, that it's that they just took off the schedule. Like um, people are saying, like it might be, it might be like. It'll, it would make sense for them to use yeah. to use Inhumans, but um, no, uh, it would make sense. But like I said before, like the old guard is phasing out. I mean, because it like, might be like um, like I, I still have a feeling it might be like an like somewhere like large after largely after Phase Three, there might be some kind of Inhumans movie. He if it, if it was not an Inhumans movie, it was a Shield movie. Right. Something. Right. Uh, s- well, I don't know. Like he's, he's, he's a shield. I don't know. I think that they're they're gonna go for completely new IP instead of going to into a, into a Netflix. I mean, if, well, there's tons of different comics. Yeah. So uh, I mean, again, Iron Man. No one fucking knew who the fuck Iron Man was until. Yeah. I mean, but then again, like, but back to I was trying to say like, the old guards getting phased out. Iron Man Four. Robert Downey Jr. wants to do it, but it hasn't been confirmed. Captain America Four hasn't been confirmed. Uh, Thor is only is the only one that's really Thor like. Hasn't had three movies yet, and then he's gonna have three, and then Hulk hasn't gotten, isn't going to, ha- doesn't seem like he's gonna, he's gonna get any sequel, except for like this big tie-in with Thor Ragnarok. Um, Ragnarok looks really good, uh, looks fascinating. I'm really curious of how it's gonna work because it's gonna be Thor and Hulk, and they they don't do well apparently in the comics. Uh, so that's gonna, really, that's gonna be really, that's gonna be really fun. It's gonna, like they said, it's gonna be a buddy cop space movie. And that's gonna be that's that. gonna be so much fucking fun. I can't wait. But um, the old guard is phasing out. So what we're gonna see probably is, I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy two is. The next lineup, I don't know if they're going to push them, but whatever Infinity War does, it will completely change the map. We will see a new yeah. level of characters, so we, we will see a new lineup, and it will so completely we, change our, so our we, fascination uh, with these characters. So before we end this podcast, like, uh, uh, that guy wrote a thing to talk about, um, uh, <laughs> let's play, uh, let's play, uh, Death Bingo. We're, gonna, we're probably going to come back to this, too, in later, in later podcasts, but, like, uh, uh, for right now, uh, like, uh, Zeno's going to have to put his foot down for Infinity War, so, like, uh, who's your, who's your, we're going to, pl- we're playing Death Bingo. 
Oh, yeah. Cool. Well, um, right. like uh, for Infinity War, we're like we're gonna Death we're gonna keep, <laughs> we're gonna keep bringing this up. Also, like I feel <laughs> also when we go see like eventually eventually two years time when we see right, Infinity War together, we're gonna have like little cards. We're gonna scratch off our little Death Bingo count. All right, but, Death Bingo. Okay. Uh, uh, how's this? Right. So like uh, for, like for you, you probably put my name on there. Just put like uh, my top my my top. Uh, I feel like this has to be like at least two deaths. I think like three probably be a lot. But like um. <laughs> For me, like, uh, <laughs> yeah, the fa uh, Falcon and Worm shouldn't be too easy, so, like, I want to, I'd go for, uh, Death, I'm gonna go with, like, the Vision of it, like, cause he has a fucking gem on his head. The Vision. Um, number two candidate, and it's, and it's, uh, and this is only for Infinity War Part 1. Oh, this is for Infinity War Part 1. Yeah. Damn, you're gonna, so Part 2 is gonna be an even another more tier trick. Jesus. Yeah. Part 2, Part 2, we're gonna, we're gonna... Play new, another uh, like one refresh. <laughs> uh, uh, so and my number two candidate is um, right now is uh, you know what I'm 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 um take out the big guns. Come on, what are you, you I'm gonna go balls. Captain America. Oh okay, all right. Got the Falcon in there. Okay, Captain America, and then who else? Um, I'm gonna go with two. Cause I feel like they can use oh, like they're gonna, Yeah, I think like oh, okay. they can like uh like I don't I think they won't feel like they only kill like kill off two iconic people. Okay. If for like for like one movie. All right, I have two right here. Uh, number one is Iron Man, and here's why: uh, Robert Downey Jr. As much as I love him, is old, and after yeah. Infinity War, I mean, here's what's gonna happen, right? We have Spider Man coming in 2017. What's gonna be really investing is going to see Sp uh, Inf is going to see Iron Man after all this time. He's gonna be in so many movies that after all this time, we've seen the 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 the. the the war, the skirmish between Captain America and him over time. We've seen him work with Spider Man. He's gonna be work, working with Spider Man. We get to Infinity War. He gets killed. Imagine the fucking rock solid amount of tears coming out of people's eyes. Yeah. This is going to be a rock solid. Uh, also, impact. here's something they can add to possibility. Um, fucking you, one of the one of the gems bingo. can uh, revive people, so you can just kill off anyone in the first movie and like. Yeah, uh, if they do a revive, I'm gonna be fucking disappointed. I'd fuck that. I'm, I don't you know, like. I don't believe in any fucking revive. They're probably gonna do one anyway. Death Bingo, okay. Uh, Iron Man, num Iron Man is number one, and uh, and number two is a really easy fucking choice. This is probably the easiest fucking choice of them all because at the end of the day, they haven't confirmed a movie for him. They haven't said anything about him, and he's not really a big box office hit. Ethan Hawke's Hawkeye will die. I'm sorry, he's done. I mean, they tried to give him investment in, in Age of Ultron, but he's just oh, yeah. there, and no one fucking cares. He's dead. He that's the second one. Uh, he like Iron Man's gonna be dead. People are gonna cry. He's gonna die. He did have one of the best lines of Age of Ultron. Like, I have an arrow. This doesn't make any sense. I, <laughs> I love that part. I love that line. Like that. So. <laughs> I wonder if he just wrote since he didn't like since he didn't like his role in uh and I wonder if he just like said that by like it just in general they kept it in there because of the fact that he didn't. I mean, he didn't like his role. Yeah, so. like uh. But that's de that's death. Well, like uh, we're we're gonna get more of our like friends' uh, opinions on like death bingo. We're, we got we got we're gonna have more entries on death bingo. Death bingo sure. part one, ladies and gentlemen. Death bingo. Uh, again. If, if there's if there's any if there's any more movies that like usually have like have big sequels or anything like that'll be fun to do more death bingo on. Yeah. But so for far, like for, exa can, for example, uh, it, the Ice Age five, uh, death bingo <laughs> all of them because it's an asteroid and there's no fucking way they lived. And story. Um, and story. I, I can do Death Bingo for uh, for Justice League. Death Bingo uh, for Bambi. No, 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 <laughs> Death Bingo for Justice League. Everyone, because it's going to be a box office failure. Oh, there, there you go. Zack Snyder. Everyone, <laughs> everyone Zach, Zach Snyder's career. There you go. <laughs> all right. I think like that's all. That's all I got. All right. Hey, what are you want? Hey guys, if you're listening to this on At Democracy, I want you to send me some questions, uh, whatever questions you want. The reason why I brought this to At Democracy is that I'd like more people to listen to it, and I think that the network here really enjoys my content. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to have you guys send me some questions if you want uh, about anything really. I'm also going to have another podcast, Cartoon Chat, which will be reviving and coming back uh, on Sundays. So guys, send in questions at techgamingpodcast at gmail.com. That's again, Podcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. I'm Brian Swan, and uh, keep watching. This is Tech Game Podcast. Of course, let's talk about PS4 Slim. It's, it, 
leaked out multiple images, and now we have a lot of videos, not just a few, a lot of videos about what it looks like. Um, it, it's like a laziest leak. It's only even caring about that shit. Yeah, let, let's talk about it. What do you think of, like, we can get, people say that, bo- that the design doesn't matter, but I think that in the most, like, in the greatest degree, design does matter. Like, you really want to yeah. look at what, you want to be interested in what's on your TV shelf or what's next to your TV uh, while you're putting the disc in while, or while it's sitting there or while it's on. And... I mean, it looks like it's it's a cost cutting measure, obviously, but it looks yeah. ugly and hideous. Like, I mean, it? My, I mean, it looks like a bland. It looks just as bland as the Wii U does. The box does. Yeah, it looks. It, well, it, for, I think it looks better than the Wii U still. Uh, it's just as bland. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I mean, I mean, it looks better than the Wii U. No, that isn't saying much. But like, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's alright. Like, it looks alright. Doesn't really wow me. Yeah. It kind of looks like a regular. PS4, so if you take off the edges and, like, take off the, like... The sharpness of it? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's weird, but, like... For me, I guess it's just okay. I mean... I can... You can take or give either or. Right, I like, mean... This is the first, like... Well, actually, I'll, I'll take the original, because I, I like the I li- look, but yeah. I like the, aer- the aerodynamic design. The sharp lines, everything about it. I, I mean, I had one. It looked... I loved that sharpness. I loved the the design of that parallelogram. Um, like I said, it's very identical. It's very well done. And this is one of the first few slim designs that I've seen where it is it looks worse than the original. Like we like the PS like I don't know. Except maybe for the PlayStation One Slim or the PlayStation One, the the of course yeah. sequel. Like that one is a is a slim is a sort of boring design sequel to the original PS one. But PS two slim is slimmer and sharper, right? Um, PS3 Slim does a pretty damn good job of making everything a little like, just as sharp. My personal preference, I I love the giant fat PS3. Yeah, no, I'll, 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 it just like has like a giant authentic feeling. I just like I I love the giant fat PS3. Gotcha. Um, um, like uh, like you know the uh, Slim PS3 is pretty cool. It's just like personal preference. I like that. I it, it's my oh, favorite not, PS3 I'm, design because it's just like. Fucking massive and it's awesome. Like, <laughs> you like the size? You like the it's, size? Yeah, it's just like a, it's like a fucking glorious titan, hmm. but console. Do you like the Xbox One? That's also a glorious titan. That also was not going to be that. That wasn't going to. That was going to. Uh, yes. Uh, um. Yeah. Yes, I like my VCR a lot. I watch. Uh, I watch dude, Walt Disney classics on it. Like. Dude, Jurassic Park. Fuck yeah. 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 Had to clean the uh had to clean the VHS off a little bit. Yeah. yeah. But. A good job, Xbox One. You know, reads my stuff. Does a good job. <laughs> but no, uh, I think that this doesn't really mean too much. It's the same design. It's, I mean, it's overall the same design. You're still getting that sharp edge. Not sharp edge. It's like a it's like a boring line edge. Uh, jumping in, like you know, we're now at this point now where we have two slim designs that have come out within the, the past two months. Xbox One has started this trend. Uh, made the Xbox One a lot thinner. Um, put it on comparison with the original PS4, and now we have the PlayStation 4 Slim, which makes the device slimmer than the original PS4. So, I mean, we have a, there's a lot to offer there. Uh, but the it's, a, it's the sli- same. Ex- oh. Sorry, it's the same exact. It's the same exact size, though. It doesn't make a difference. Uh, I mean, sorry, it's the same exact gigabyte size. It's probably going to be the same. The, the same exact price, or if not lower. Um, but sorry, no, it's going to be lower. It's going to be a lower price. Because of course PlayStation Four hasn't dropped in price; it's still three forty nine. I think they're going to drop it finally down to two ninety nine, if not two forty nine. Because Xbox One S is now two ninety nine. I think they want to keep that equal price parity. That's also why they were able to. They're probably going to be able to cut the price as well because it has a cheaper design. And when you have a cheaper design, you should be able to sell it for less. Yeah. Yeah. Did I take all the all the wind out of your out of your sales? I can't think of nothing else. To be honest, it's like it's like it's like it's an okay thing. I li- I like I like the. Uh, I mean, I like slim, so I guess like they they're more efficient. Efficient. I mean, like yeah, I don't really care for like slims for like home consoles because they're gonna stay at my home. And it's just the and, same, like, it's I, the same I, thing. I, yeah, I like I like big fantastic designs that like are meant for like displays. So I do like. I do like a design like a GameCube. I do like design like the original PS3, and I do like design like uh, okay. the, X- the Xbox. The Xbox Three Sixty had a good line design. I like the, I liked. well, I like the original Xbox as well. I always, whenever I yeah. see that in a, in a store, I'm always like, I want to buy it. I want to put it on my sh- on a shelf somewhere. Uh, like it just looks really cool. 
Um, so it has that really odd two thousands like yeah. design, where it's like they'll put a giant X yeah. on the top of it. <laughs> like by by today's standards, that like you would never see that. Um, I mean, again, like I love the PlayStation 2's design. Um, I, I love the play. I love the PlayStation Three's designs. Either like every single one of them. Um, even the top loading one. It, it's simple, but yeah, know. like if they like well, why I like all Slims, I guess it's like it's a new like a. Uh, New opportunity for like the console to be to have the same console but in a different style. Right. Like I wish Nintendo would like do these more with its home consoles because like I would Wii love I, I would love a better designed Wii U because like <laughs> the console design is boring Please. and it's fucking, like is there like an opposite word for the is there an, like an opposite word for the word grown because like when something because like it, like like a. Uh, like it's like it's the opposite of me. I mean, I mean, it's the opposite of Grown for like the Wii U design right now because I would like a better looking console. And I'd like a better looking tablet too. Yeah. Cause that fucking clunky ass thing is it's, fucking. It's touch. It I mean, looks you keep like... saying like you keep saying like it's an iPad. I would like. I wish it would look more like an iPad. <laughs> to be honest, it's just like just like a little bit more flatter and shit. <laughs> it's just, like more design. Like. Yeah. It, it yeah is it. Yeah, I, like, it, they they didn't put any effort into it. I mean, we talk about it like we literally have every I think every single episode have said something negative about the Wii U one time or another. It's it's funny, like, but and like I was I, I like I was like convinced this thing was gonna be like great early on, and then Nintendo was like, oh, what the fuck? We don't we don't care anymore. We just yeah, get, we we but, give up. We yeah. we honestly don't have nothing. Exactly, but when it comes down to like Slims, though, I mean, I don't know. Like the the cool like it's fascinating the fact that. X, the Xbox One S did come out, and people got really furious about it, and were like, "No one's gonna buy the One S," and people are buying the One S. Yeah. And now, and now, PlayStation fans who were all angry about Xbox making a slim, um, now they have a slim, and they're shutting the fuck up. Like, I'm not, I'm not saying anything. Like, I, I don't get it, but you know, um, it looks like they're doing the same thing that Xbox is doing, except Xbox is gonna have a much powerful console next year. Looks like PlayStation toward the September event is going to have a more powerful console, a slightly more powerful console just for this year, and then Nintendo's going to sit there with a two ninety nine priced Wii U, and um, we'll wait for NX to come out. Or the fucking NX is, I don't know, like it's. We still have the September. Remember, it's going to come out. The the events about is 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 apparently September, so we have two cool events. Oh, okay. Sony okay. and and Nintendo in September. And it's like, uh, uh cause like I'm tired of gimmick bull, a gimmicky bullshit. That like Are you sure? well, I, I was I was I was fi- I was like fine with like the Wii. Uh, the, the Wii was like okay like this is actually working pretty fine and like and like the and when like when it came to the Wii like the Wii worked so well I'm I'm sure they're gonna do something just fine with the Wii U. <laughs> they're gonna do something like amazing with the Wii U. like we just haven't seen its full potential yet I mean, and we're the- never going and like we're never going to see its fucking full potential because Nintendo was never making any type of potential for it I mean the, the truth is that was the hype right everyone was just yeah. like. We we did so well, well financially. Yeah. Um, what are they going to do next? I mean, what are they? And that was the failure of the. But we're not going to go like, into. We're well, not like, going to go into. Well, Wii Nintendo U, fans like I mean, mindset was like they did so many creative things with the with the Wii. So like okay, they probably had they had to have like a lot of unique things in mind for the Wii U. Right. And we haven't really seen any of that. Nope. Um, see I, some experiments come and go, but nothing really stick around. Right. They, I mean, again, Star Fox is another example of trying something that I think would have been yeah. would have been brilliant on VR. Uh, I don't, I didn't. God, I think you got me into the Wii. U. We're doing this Wii U thing again. Well, uh, do, we, do we do this every time? Yeah, con- contro- but, we talking about VR would have been better on fucking a controller. No, it would have been great on a controller. I'm saying that yeah. like putting putting a putting your cockpit view on the Wii U tablet is stupid. And if you're going to do that, just put it on a VR device. And stop with this bullshit. Yeah, all the thing, all the people know the console. It's just like uh, the thing with two screens. That's all it is. Yeah. The PS3 with two screens. Mm-hmm. But um, I think PS3 is better than Wii U. Hmm. Yeah, library wise. Yeah, and it has a Blu-ray player. Yeah. And a CD player, and a DVD player. Who uses CD players anymore? Everyone. Every one of my hit new kids, you know, they all use the D- the CDs. You know, haven't you gotten the Backstreet Boys? I'm living in the past. I'm living in the present, bro, my homie. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Yeah. Guys, this has been Tech Game Podcasts, episode 16. I'm Brian Swan, joined today with Mark. Canine Biscuits. Find him on Canine Biscuits. Find him and his videos on YouTube. Canine Biscuits. Canine Biscuits. And on Facebook. 
Guys, I'm Brian Swan, a.k.a. Democracy. Find me on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. Thanks for listening. I'm Brian Swan. Again, I keep saying it three times in a row. Stay tuned for more. This has been Taking a Podcast. I need to go to sleep. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm getting my eyes getting baggy, too.